All right, towards the end of uh, the workday, decided to do a little video, beautiful day out. It's, uh, it's definitely a little bit cold. However, there's four questions that we got. And the first one comes from Yera Wizard Harry. I have no idea what that means, but anyway. Um, oh, by the way, with weather. Um, Anytime that someone actually complains about the weather, just don't listen to them because it's something that you cannot control, first of all. Second of all, we have it way better than what it was even 50 years ago, even 20 years ago, even 30, you know, like, imagine it was before that, before heating was centralized, before cooling was centralized, before all of the gloves, hats, jackets, uh, waterproof, like we used to wear animal skin that some of them retained heat, some of them didn't, some of them were waterproof, they smelled, they had disease. Just just be thankful, all right? I know that's just like, they're like, oh, you like, take it for take it for granted, you know, like how easy life is. But anyway, don't get me started on that. So he says, um, I've been spending time with uh, helping my son research into abundance and discovered a great amount of resources in someone's max miracle method never heard about it um abundance is huge that that's with anything you, you have to feel what was i talking about oh today i was grabbing lunch and this guy was he was yelling at me not really yelling at me but he was just i don't know maybe not having a good day and he was like he's like choose a line and i'm like well it's actually funny so i went into the larry david curb your enthusiasm story where you chose the wrong line and one went longer than the other so i said no i'm gonna wait until you know one of them is available and I'm gonna go and order my salad instead of waiting behind one person. And I said, I turned around and I said, like abundance, you know, you have an abundance of opportunity. And when you have that in your mindset, you start walking around in a totally different light, totally different light. When someone says, no, I'm not gonna do business with you, you have this feeling of like, okay, like, yeah, you're persistent, you keep on going, but you also know that there's so much money to be made out there, there's so much business to be had. You don't need to be jealous at someone else's success, which I just made a video about that. It's like, if it doesn't happen, there's so much opportunity. When when someone says there's no jobs or I'm waiting for the right job, like I understand I'm waiting for the right job, but when someone says there's no jobs, there are jobs. You just don't want to take the jobs that are available. There's plenty of jobs cleaning a street, cleaning a bathroom. You know, like, um, I don't know if I told you this story. I'm looking now towards the East Village. You know, I'm in Midtown Manhattan, but I'm towards the East Village. I was at a, a pizzeria, and the guy behind the counter, I started talking with him, and I said, oh, you know, are you the owner? Because he looked uh, very professional, and he, he just, the way he was, he was like in his 50s. He just, you know, he seemed like very professional to be at a pizzeria. And usually you're, you know, you see kids or something else, you know, serving up the pizza. And the guy said, no, he lost his shirt due to, what's his name? The guy, uh, uh, Bernie Madoff. He lost everything to Bernie Madoff. And he said, I needed to get a job immediately. And he was flipping pizza. So when someone says, I don't have job or there's no jobs out there, there are, you just don't want it. And when someone just keeps on bringing up excuses to not start a business or there's no business to be had or it's a recession and yeah, there's a recession. You look at the amount of companies that started in a recession, you'd be shocked at the opportunity that they had because at that time, everyone condenses and another recession is gonna be happening. Anyway, uh, plow through these other three questions. Next question comes from Wayward Wins. That's a pretty cool name. He goes, amazing story, good reaction, blah, blah, blah. He's talking about, um, I've been practicing stoism, and he's talking about Marcus Aurelius's meditations. So uh, if you're not familiar, Marcus Aurelius essentially made a journal, or he didn't make a journal, he was journaling about how he handled certain situations, especially especially pressure situations. I'm not familiar with the book as much, so I can't speak about it, but it's essentially embracing the bad things and just saying, this is how it is, see it how it is, and then find a solution. So there's, uh, we're going through a deal right now with one of my agents, and the other side keeps on focusing on the problem. They're like, well, who who's to blame? How did we get here, blah, 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 and I'm thinking, and I'm saying, who cares? Like, let's look at the solution instead of looking at the problem. Once we find the solution 
and we move forward with the solution, then we can look back and say, how did we, how can we avoid this in the future? Not while we're in the middle of the problem, say, how did we get here, blah, blah, blah. You say, okay, let's look at the solution. Once we find a solution and it works, then we look back and we say, how do we avoid that? How do we avoid that again? How do we avoid another recession? How do we avoid uh, another collapse? How do we avoid the company going under or a client that has that objection or, you know, customer service going bad or or a social media nightmare that you put out a social media post and then someone gets offended and then they share it and then people that aren't offended then get offended. It's like, it's amazing people, the, the keyboard jockeys out there. Uh, next question uh, comes from Rami. I'm assuming Rami, Rami7605. She says, I agree with that mass stinking or mass thinking screws the world, she used another word, uh, screws the world and also causes problems to people who think outside of the box and go on their own way. But a friend of mine thinks that it's actually good. So she's saying that mass thinking is bad. Her friend thinks mass thinking is good. Um, and then she goes into this, this whole paragraph. Mass thinking keeps very skilled people out of the run for economic success. I know many people with very high degrees who are brainwashed. Amazing, amazing way to say that is they are brainwashed. They watch the news, they watch reality TV, they watch the commercials that are with it. They read the magazines, you know? It's like, it, it like really bothers me because there's so many talented people out there but they are brainwashed. And one of the reasons they're brainwashed is that we're not creating on a daily basis. We're not putting out a blog post. We're not putting out, we're not journal entering. We're not creating. Back in the day, we created so much. We had to create tools. We chopped down trees. We had to go hunting. We had to churn butter. We had to get milk. We had to you know, mow the lawn, we had to go to war, we had to negotiate in person, we had to go to the town and talk to the, the blacksmith who's making uh, tools for your harvest, you know, like all these things, you're creating this. Now, you literally wake up in your very comfortable bed to an alarm, very comfortably, you don't have to wake up to the sunrise, you get out of bed, you put on clothes, perfect enough so that you're warm enough or cool enough for the weather and if it rains you have an umbrella and then you get into your your little transportation vehicle whether that's a subway or a mass transit long island railroad or a car or bus or whatever you get to your work and you sit at a desk all day and then you go home and you eat food that was given to you that was cheap and then you watch tv you go to sleep and you do it all over again tell me where the how do you see abundance in that? Wonder why the abundance mentality, which is a mass thinking is so easy to get on top of because getting outside the box, that's why people like, regardless of their political beliefs, but that's why um, PC, you know, politically correct, why people are against that. You know, there's so many people that get offended because it's mass thinking on a global scale where everybody thinks the exact same way, which is terrible. There needs to be some renegade out there that thinks completely outside of the box, that, that Steve Jobs that makes a phone like this that has one button instead of an entire keyboard, that he puts the internet, a phone, pictures, video, music onto one device. So mass thinking, if you start thinking like mass thinking, you're gonna be like everyone else. You're gonna have the same body, you're gonna have the same wealth, you're gonna have the same mindset, you're gonna have the same relationships. It's all gonna be standard, it's all gonna be normal, it's all gonna be boring, it's all gonna be average. You're gonna settle, you're gonna not be happy, you're gonna pretend you're happy, and you're gonna walk around, you're gonna take Facebook photos and Instagram photos and Snapchat, everything, I'm having a great life, but you're really not because you're not creating, you're not going after what you want. So anyway, mass thinking is not the way to go. I cannot disagree with that anymore, uh, which actually leads perfectly into this next question by Hele, I'm terrible at names right now. Hele Rosengard, she says, it's been a year, uh, it's been a year now, how do you feel, or how do you, I can't speak out loud, comprehend, and say the question and think of an answer at the same time. I gotta get better at that. Which actually leads perfect into this. So she's talking about Mind Power by John Kehoe, which is an amazing book. I 
highly recommend you check it out. Uh, you could see my video review of it. It will blow your mind. And it really opened my, my eyes to how powerful your mindset, mindset, not just your mind. People will talk about mind power, like how smart you are or your degree to creativity, but your actual mindset towards the world. It's just, it's like the matrix. It's like Neo. It's like you see like zeros and ones across your, your face. So essentially she's saying it's been a year since I've read uh, Mind Power by John Kehoe. She says, I think I want to read the book. How do you... Um, how do you do now? In other words, like, how am I doing now, now that I read John Kehoe's book? Everything you think, everything you say, just, you have to realize, is it positive, is it negative? So in other words, you say, like I just said, I, I'm not good at reading a question, thinking of the answer, and saying it out loud. That's me putting a stop on actually becoming better. However, if I said I need to improve or I am improving, that's way better because that trains my mind to say, you're improving, you can improve. But if you say, I can't do that, I, I can't make phone calls, I can't go to the gym, I don't have the time, I, I, I'm never going to find anyone for me. Uh, my kids are never going to be who I want them to be or whatever, you know, whatever you say, you know, I, I'm never going to become CEO. I'm, I'm never going to start my own company. I can't start my own company. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. I don't have the, I don't have the money to eat well. You know, I don't have the time to exercise. You know, these are all excuses, but the problem not only is an excuse, but the problem is the wording of the excuse, the wording of I can't. I don't have time. I Anything that says I can or I don't, that means you agree and that there's no moving forward. So you need to catch yourself when you actually start using words like that. And then perfect, you know, I opened the whole video about the weather. You know, the, the people are like, oh my God, it's cold out or it's raining or it's too hot or blah, blah, blah. First of all, you can't control it, like I said. Second of all is that, uh, that's your mindset towards something that you can't control. So what's your mindset on things you can control, like your diet or your exercising or your financial situation or your relationships or your business? If, if, if that's your mindset towards something you can't control, what's your mindset towards something you can control? Something to think about. So anytime you catch yourself, you have to catch yourself. This is the biggest thing. I know we're going on 13 minutes, but you have to catch yourself on the way that you phrase sentences, the way you phrase your goals. You, if, if you say, I should do something, you're not gonna do it. But once you say, I need to do this, I have to do this, it's, it's in my blood. You can see the passion on someone's face if they're actually gonna accomplish a goal. Perfect example is this, this comes all full circle to identity as well, is that when someone's like, I'm a smoker, I'm a drinker, you know, or um, I'm, that ty I'm not that type of person. I'm not an outgoing person. I I'm not a reader, you know? Like, who told you you're not a reader? Uh, I wasn't either. I wasn't a reader until 22. I read three books total until 22. I hated reading. I hated school, but I hated reading. I didn't see a point in it. I had ADD, which was also a mindset, which I don't. I might, but when you focus on something you like, you'll focus on it. And that's the thing, is that you have to focus on the things that you like. Anyway, when someone says books and they're like, ah, that's not me. I'm not a reader. I'm, I'm more of a movie guy. I'm more of a reality TV person. Oh, really? Why? Because you're just consuming it instead of producing something, instead of creating something, instead of questioning why you're overweight or why you don't have the money you want or why you don't have the job you have or the relationship you have, why you're just roommates with your spouse instead of having that passion, that love, that connection that you had in the beginning when you first met, you know? Who said that? So you have to, for me, I, it changed my life. It's a very short book. It's a very amazing book. I, I cannot recommend it anymore. Uh, we're on 14 minutes. Um, I'll squeeze in Law of Attraction really quick. Uh, actually, no, I'll make another video about that because that's that's a totally different topic. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Subscribe to the YouTube video. Oh, by the way, I started a blog post, a daily blog post every single day. I put it out and it's essentially a topic that is on my mind that's going to help you do something better in your life based on something that I failed at or I tried at and I found a good method at. 
So it's like a self-development kind of email. But anyway, you can see the posts, but you can subscribe and receive it every single day. That's up to you. But that's my only plug for it. And Instagram, those are my favorite social media networks. Talk to you guys soon. Again, if you have any questions, leave in the comments below. And the question of the day is, how are you changing your mindset? In what area, more importantly, are you looking to change your mindset? And it's usually an area you really feel passionately towards and you have the biggest fear. Anyway, have an awesome day. I'll talk to you guys soon.